I'm, I grew up in Michigan, but we now live in Pine Mountain, Georgia. My name is Marcus Pollard. I grew up in Battle, Alabama, but we currently live in Pine Mountain, Georgia. <laughs> well, she's a small business I'm owner. A small business owner. I have a shop, Maze and Grace. And I'm a stay-at-home dad now. He likes to say that, but he's a football coach. I'm a football coach, <laughs> but a retired pro football player. I play for Indianapolis Colts, uh, Detroit Lions, Seattle Seahawks, and Atlanta Falcons. Where the moon go? That's how I used to do when I was running that football. Get out of the way, Miami Dolphins. I'm coming through. Get out of the way. I'm coming. I'm coming. This will be a good free training camp workout because it's all legs. I played in the game once. We were down 21 points with four minutes ago and came back and won. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's not over till it's over. Oh, boy. You about to throw up? I could be. Let's go! I've been retired now for, I think, this season will be my third year. I try not to count because that means I'm getting older. Um, but I'm also a high school football coach, and I went back to my hometown to um, just help out the kids, uh, just teach them about life and that there's more to life than just playing football. Good teammate you got here? Awesome teammate. Why is she so good? She's so good because she's encouraging me all the time. She's motivating me. She has no quit in her. For me, you know, playing training camps and having to do um, workouts in the summer and get myself in shape, I'm always having to do that. I'm always having to tell myself, you got to keep going. I can tell myself, I can program myself in my mind to push past how I feel. She never had that experience before. So to see her strapping on, tie the shoelaces up, and go to work <laughs> is awesome. Well, she never had to do it before. That is unbelievable for me. That's our life lesson to our kids. Never quit. Give out, don't never give up. Don't never give up. To me, it, it don't take no courage at all to give up. Like a personality trait. Once you start quitting at things, it becomes easier to do. If you never quit, then you never want to quit. You know what it means to persevere. It becomes easy. When you quit at something that's tough, the next thing that might not be as tough, you'll quit you at that quit. too. And then everything in your life, when your marriage gets tough or situation at your job gets tough, you because you quit before, you got that stigma, well, I'm just going to quit. That makes it easy for me. We're not, we, we're not doing that. It's a lesson our parents passed on to us and a lesson we're going to pass on to our kids. And we pray it's a lesson that they continue to pass on. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? Never, never, never quit. Isn't that great? You know, I am so excited about being here this morning, but... I'm excited because my friends are here and they're going to be sharing with you. I wanted to tell you a little bit about them because a lot of times people can see someone uh, play in the NFL and they can respect that and they can honor that and they can be excited about that. And so often when we see people on a television show, we get excited and we give them so much credit and we want to honor them. But the reason why I enjoy Marcus and Imani is that both of them love Jesus. And they love Jesus so much. And you can see it in everything they do. You see it in how they raise their children. You can see it in how they treat one another. And they are just one of the godliest couples that I have seen in a long time. And it is indeed my privilege to invite them, the two of them, on the stage now. Marcus and Imani. Oh. Appreciate it, Doctor. Oh. Thank you, Richard. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Hey, sis. Marcus, you look like you can go play today. I try to stay at it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I am so excited about having the two of them. And, you know, we know that they've, they've had some wonderful experiences with the Amazing Race. Let me ask you, how was it on the Amazing Race? You want the real answer? <laughs> yeah, the real answer. Yeah, give us a download on it. The dirt. <laughs> yeah, give us the dirt. It was, a, it was a challenge. It was tough. It was exciting. Um, it was, I was hungry, I was tired, sleep yeah. deprivation. There were so many emotions that were going throughout the race, but we, at the end of the day, I think we, we enjoyed it, and we enjoyed, wow. enjoyed each other's company the whole time. Yeah. Right, now, did you ever have to smack him? <laughs> no. She wanted to smack him when I was trying to land that airplane. Oh, you know what, I'm telling you, I was, uh, we have a, a, a couple of pilots here, and I wanted to see if they could give you a lesson in case that ever happened to you again, brother. <laughs> yeah. Now, hey, now, let me tell you, how was it leaving your children? I think that was the hardest part. That was the hardest part. So before we went and we knew there was an opportunity for us to maybe do it, we, um, we had a meeting with the kids to make sure that they were okay with it. We like to include them in on family meetings. We like to have them express themselves so that, so that they're able to have a voice and they know what it yeah. means to have a voice. So if they would have said, no, Mom, you know, Dad, that's, that's a little long to be gone, then we wouldn't have done it. But they were really supportive and really excited about the opportunity, so we jumped on it. 
Now, now you said that uh, that's a long time to be gone. How long did you guys leave for? 35 days. Really? So you didn't go away for a week and then, you know, I mean, go and then come back during the week and then go back? <laughs> no, no, really? no, it's, uh, it because was that's what it does on the television. But it makes it look like that. <laughs> I, would, I, would run, I would run into people in Walmart and we, and they, the last scene was just so the last show was in Africa. And I said in Walmart on Tuesday, weren't you just in Africa? I said, no, that was taped back in June and July. I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm at home now. Right. Wow, wow, wow. So what were some of the great uh, challenges? that you faced over there. I mean, Mark, some of the stuff they had you doing, I was just totally surprised. Yeah, um, I think one of the things that was really challenging, I don't know if you guys saw this episode, about the uh, bodybuilding in Brussels. That Ooh. was- <laughs> Hope you missed it, actually. <laughs> Hope that's one you missed. Yeah. That was, that was, that was tough because, you know, it's, you have to be out in the final It was like the audience like this, and we were up on the stage and all these people were up there watching us, and pretty oh, much- that was, that, I'm just, he oh, asked what do you mean, pretty much? So, did you have on your clothes like this? No. Can we skip this subject? This is gruesome, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. It was a crowd of people like this. We had to have on bodybuilding clothing, which is Swim fine when you're an tire. athlete, oh, but when you're a mom of four, it's not so Swim cute. Swimsuit attire. <laughs> okay, so I did it, and it's over. Good. So, <laughs> moving right along. Moving right along. <laughs> moving right along. Moving right along. <laughs> You know what, it is just so amazing, Mar Marcus. You know, I, I was looking at one of the text questions that we got in, Marcus, mm -hmm. and, uh, so, and, the, and, the, and someone asked this question. What would you say, the, uh, would you say the, that the amazing race uh, was harder or easier than your time in training camp? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, having to do football and uh, training camps is hot, having been away from the family and the kids and getting beat up by linebackers and tackle by safeties and so it made it really tough but I cannot honestly compare what I went through in a training camp to the amazing race although the amazing race was very difficult at times very hard at times not knowing when you're going to get to sleep or eat uh, but to say it was as hard as a training camp I dare not say that with all the respect that I give to the game. Yeah two a days or something yeah, else. Something else. I mean when you go and out pads and right I mean you wake up at six o'clock in the morning and it's treatment it's going to eat breakfast and then I mean you just dread it for like 20 days in a row. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. It's ridiculous. Hey, now, so and two days in pads, too, remind that, in the right, summertime. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I, w I probably would have rather the amazing race. Yeah. I, <laughs> not today. No, no, not back, back then. Yeah, yeah, back, then, back then. Well, you know what? what I, you know, I, one of the reasons why we thought that Amani, it would be so good to have her come and to share is that she did something that, uh, that I've seen so many wives have a challenge in doing. And that is she started her own small business. And so I want to just take a moment and ask her a few questions because you do have a business here, right? I do. Tell us about it. All right, so we have a store, um, Maze and Grace. It's in downtown LaGrange. Um, it's between Cisons and um, Mayor Souls, right on Main Street down the, the street from okay, Is it okay theater. if I interpret? Yeah. Go to the movie theater and it's right <laughs> down the street. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, no. that helps. That it helps. That's where we are. Um, so we, this, we're in our third year there. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. We're embarking on three years. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's one. So, so, so tell us, how did you get started in this, in, in your own business? How did you get started with this? Okay. So um, following Marcus's career is kind of difficult when you're an uh, NFL wife in terms of you pick up and move. You could get cut from a team today and have to move someplace else tomorrow. So packing up kids and that kind of stuff is kind of hard to hold a steady job. So um, we started a gift basket company that I had from home, um, and that took off. We had a lot of clients, and it, it was really big, and it was good, but I think we got traded or moved to Seattle, and kind of hard to move inventory, but it gave me a feeling that I liked this. And again, while he was um, playing football, I was still doing things behind the scene, preparing. Um, like I said before, the NFL stands for not for long, so there Amen. is life, <laughs> life after football. And you know, yeah. we're still relatively young, so there's a lot of things in that money. People see big dollars, but okay, I plan to be here for a long time, so that's got to stretch out for a real long time. So we had to, you know, put, put, put our ducks in order. And so when we moved here, um, it gave us the opportunity that we're finally someplace stable. And, um, you know, I've always wanted to do it. Marcus was really supportive um, in getting the business started. So that's how it kind of took flight. And I want to encourage you to go by. Now, now Marcus, uh, can, can I ask you a question that has nothing to do with what she just said? Who'd you just wave at? 
My boy, Honeybee. Oh, Honeybee. What's up, Honeybee? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. And I was just curious. I saw him get excited about someone. I was like, who was that? But anyway, it's uh, back to the business. <laughs> back to the business. Hey, uh, 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 and, so, and so what are some of the challenges as a business owner that you go through and uh, that, that you go through on a regular basis? Okay. Well, starting the business um, actually worked out. Things were pretty smooth going through because starting it, I, I prayed about it. You know, God, if this is what you have me to do, just make it simple for me. Make it plain, make it easy. And if it's not what you would have me to do, if I'm envisioning this is what I want to do and not what you would have me to do, then, you know, block it. Just mm -hmm. block it for me. And everything just popped. It made it real simple. But now running the business, I do everything by myself. It's a one-man show. So, well, outside of taking out the trash and building the <laughs> Who does that? My sidekick. Oh, my sidekick. Yeah. Um, so I do the advertising, the marketing, and all that kind of stuff. But the hardest thing for me probably is just getting people to know that we're there. You know, um, I said it before, it's like, I'm from Michigan originally, so my family and my friends, the bulk of them are back home. So it's different when you move someplace else and you don't know everybody here. So it's really right. getting the word out right. when you come into a new community Yeah. Um, to get people to come. So that I think that was probably the most challenging is just that. But yeah, One of the things I, wanna, I always do is I always encourage people to support our local businesses. And one thing I want to just say to you, you know, if you could go downtown, you know, any business that you want to see stay here, just support it. And so often we don't have the mindset. It's always, you know, we, we think a lot of times it's easier to shoot down to Noonan or to Columbus and catch the best deal. And sometimes the best deal is not always the best deal. That's right. And so sometimes it's good just to say, you know what, I need to go in and intentionally support. We have a number of people here that have businesses uh, and that, that, that I think that if we want to make sure they stay here in the future, we have to be the ones to support them. What do you think about that? I think that's awesome. Amen, that's amen. Choice. Well, that's good. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the things that I ask you to do, uh, uh, Money, is that I ask you to, if you would bring some of the things from your shop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times what we don't do in new communities, we don't sell things, but, you know, you know thinking of this person with their own business and, I, I was so excited about them coming. I said, bring some of the things and make them available during the Super Bowl party. And so right beside our table, we'll have the business, her, her things from her shop. Tell us about some of those things because, you know, Larry told me that you had sweatbands and you said these are not sweatbands. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a photo of it and that's what Larry calls a sweatband that's on my head with not the mine. flower. Not, yeah. Mark, no, not, not his, his is a sweatband. No, it's a bandana. <laughs> um, so the vintage head wraps is what I'm wearing right there. And we have some out. Um, at our table at the display. They did really, really well. And after wearing them on the show, the sales for the company actually went up. That's pretty impressive. I didn't know yes. somebody would want something that I had like that, but it worked. Um, so we have some of those. We have um, some leather, not exactly these, but some leather bracelets out there. So it's just a few items of the did very many. Did you get this many. from your shop? Yes, we did. Do you mind if you just take it off so I can take a peek at it? You sure can. Now, I'm that kind of person where, you know, I just ask. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> yeah, and so now, now this won't fit me, will it? Uh -huh. We have some men's bracelets. Oh, do you? We good. Do. We that's just impressive. got in a Christian line of jewelry um, that'll be out on our floor next week. Oh, for the first that is time. wonderful. So um, it's just an inspirational. It really is reflective of who we are. Um, most of the things are things that we have that we we know. Um, you know, they're inspirational. They're. I mean, I'm a very inspirational person. I inspire people to be their best, to do their best. You know, to okay. dream and to go after it. And when you come in the store. When you walk in the door, you're greeted with, hi, welcome to Maze and Grace. Now, everybody who has come in has enjoyed it and has come back. And we just want you, you know, to be inspired. There's so yes. much to do and, you know, so much life to live. So we, we try to carry that into the store. Now, let me ask you this, because there are some people here. You know, I, you know, I often um, conclude that so many people, they have dreams, but they never launch out to fulfill their dreams. You know, some people have a dream of going back to college. Some people have a dream of getting their GED. Some have the dream of, of starting their own business. If, let's say we have people here this morning with their dream. What would you say to them to encourage them to follow their dream? I say don't be a dream chaser, be a dream catcher. Mm. Don't be a dream chaser, be a dream catcher. Like you said, everybody in here has some dream to do something. And it's never too late. You're never too old, you're never too young to start. So same thing we tell our kids, and then don't give up, just like we have on the show, like we yes. talked about on the show, is don't give up on it. You know, yes. if you have a dream, God put that dream in you, and just work on it, and and and, and watch it just come to fruition. Mm -hmm. yeah, can I? Can yeah. I, uh, can please I do, please do. And I think the thing that really helps uh, Amani in what she's doing is that she's passionate about what she does. I 
think if you decide you want to do something, I say you be passionate about that. Because if you decide you want to be a landscape designer and you don't like being out in the hot sun, it won't work. <laughs> Just won't work. It ain't gonna work. So I think what you have to do is make sure you have passion. That's what she has for her business. She's passionate about what she's doing. And I say that anything, anything you decide to do in life, make sure you have a passion for that. Otherwise, you're gonna get old and boring, and you're gonna stop doing it. Wow, wow, wow. You know, um, this morning, uh, I want Marcus to just take a few moments and to teach us. But you know, Marcus, I was reading, I was reading this article, and the reason why I wanted you to talk about, you know, just a little bit about work and being your best, is something, I read this article, and do you realize there are tons of jobs available in Troop County? Now, now this is gonna blow your mind. And most of the jobs are through Kia and their affiliates. But most people don't, they don't keep the jobs. The reason why is, is that when they go and they apply for the job and they start to work, they find that the work is harder than what they're used to. <laughs> hey. Hallelujah! <laughs> No, no, I'm throwing this out there. You didn't hear the brother say that. Oh, you yeah. Know, He's we, speaking out experience. Yeah, yeah. He's it's speaking personal. That, it's personal. I, yeah, that was personal. But, but I was reading this article that when most people, they go to work for Kia, and within a week, they quit because the work is so hard, and so therefore, there are so many people that are unemployed, yet you have work but they're not strong enough to go do the work. Amen, amen, amen. And you know, I'm just so excited because Marcus is gonna talk about a little, you know, just ask him if he can just give us a few principles on, you know, just work and, you know, how did it, was it for him growing, you know, just some of those things and, and, and just really share because work is hard. And you know, we're supposed to honor the Lord. So Amani, why don't we go and just let him go to work and uh, is that all right? That's good. Oh, good to, hey, can we all welcome Marcus this morning? Thank you. I got it. I got it. Thank you. Let me get this out of your way. Oh, thank you. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm excited about being here. I was here last year, and I get excited every year uh, to come back. Uh, as soon as Ricky called me, say, Doc, we got that Super Bowl party going again. You coming? I said, I'm in. I'm all in. I'm all in. Uh, I hear Rick has been teaching on uh, work as worship. And that's something that's very important to me, very, very important to me. And I think what, what, what I want to do is trying to bridge the gap between work and worship. Sometimes we, we feel like that when we work, I'm just collecting a paycheck or it's something that I'm obligated to do, but our work can be our worship and favorable in God's eyesight. Because it's ordained, a man should work. A man or a woman should work. And I, and I thought last year, uh, I, I came in with my brand new Atlanta Falcons game jersey on and looking dapper in that. And so I thought with all the honor and the prestige that game day jerseys get, I thought, why not I wear the one that I go to work in? Come on, somebody. I might have missed that. This jersey is a practice jersey. It don't get the same glitz and glamour that the game jersey gets, but this jersey, when you put this one on, you gotta go to work. You gotta go to work. You gotta see the four hours on Sunday, but the 60 to 70 hour weeks that go in, in this jersey, cause you had to go to work. What I, what I, what I learned as a, as a young man at a very, very, very early age is the importance of work. I watched my mom work two and three jobs at times. She worked two and three jobs and went back to college as a non-traditional student. And because of her work, me watching her work, she graduated magna cum laude. And I was like, oh laude. <laughs> I watched my dad as a young man uh, work. Um, he never taught me to shave. He never taught me how to ride a bike. He never taught me how to cut my hair, and I do that from time to time. But he never taught me those things, but the one thing he did teach me, he taught me how to work. He taught me how to work. He said, if you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't work, you don't eat. And the more, more important than that, he taught me to have a, uh, uh, a value 
a uh, responsibility to your work, to detail to your work. I can remember being a young guy, and my dad had this landscape company, and he he put they have this big. We go work on this house, and it'd be a big old flower bed, just full of flowers and shrubs, and get in there and pull them weeds out. Like, come on, Daddy, you know, that's, that's some work. Now he said, you got to get in there and pull out. I said, why can't we just spray some stuff on these weeds? Well, I got to get in there with all that. He said, because you need to have detail to your work. You need to take pride in what you're doing. I said, okay, Dad, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear with that one. And then it's no different in our worship. It is biblical that we do our work with excellence. I found a few scriptures to undergird, to corral, to pin in, what I'm talking about when it comes to work. If I could get them up on the, on the oh, here we go. Thank you. Well, I'm telling you, I, li I like this intro. You get, Ricky, you got it going. Can't get this at Oasis. We, Reverend Stone, we need to get this. Hey, man, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Next, Proverbs 12 and 11. He who works, his land will have a bountiful food, but he who chases fantasies lack judgment. Talking about work. Proverbs 14 and 23. All hard work, somebody say all hard work, brings a profit, but mere talk leads to, my God. I got another one. Proverbs 21, 25. The sluggard's craving will be the death of him because his hands refuse to. <laughs> he won't work. He won't work. He won't work. Good planning and hard work leads to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts leads to. Whoo. Come out. Work. You see, I ain't just up here talking, just talking, talking nonsense. I'm talking about what's in the book, in the Bible, and you, somebody here, Ricky gonna get to it later, and if, if you don't believe in God, and you don't believe in the word, then that, that probably ain't gonna help you with work. If you don't believe that, that probably ain't gonna help you with work. And as I, as I thought about how would I, how would I, how would I encourage NCC, New Community Church, today on work, I like to think about how to excel in the workplace and be my very best. How do I excel in the workplace and be my very best? I thought, I thought, when I, when I think about how I excel as a football player, I excelled in the workplace when I recognized who my boss was was, is. I work for a lot of great people. Uh, Coach Donji comes to mind right away. Great man of God. I love him to death, but he is not my boss. Mr. Ursay, who I love to death, great owner, he was not my boss. No matter who signed your checks, no matter who sit over you in authority, they are not your boss when you know who your boss is. One of my favorite scriptures, uh, Colossians 3 and 23. Woo! <laughs> Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for a human master. I'm talking about work. I can repeat, I'm, I'm reminded of a time when I was uh, uh, in Detroit, and it wasn't a great time in Detroit. And it got even worse after my first year there. I started playing for a coach who came in, took the position as offensive coordinator. You can go do your research if you want to find out who it is. I, I pray for him now. Um, um, and so I, I, I get this new offensive coordinator. He comes in and says, Marcus, you're the greatest. I've never had a tight end can do the things you do. I never had a guy that can catch the ball like that, run routes and block it. I can put you out and split you out at wide receiver. I, I can put you in the slide. And I'm like, I'm floating. This man just done built my head up to 
like I can do no wrong. But I started working for him, not my boss. But I had, I had to go through that situation so I could remember. Sometimes God puts us in situations on our job where you got to remember who you're working for. Secondly, secondly, how I excel in the workplace, I recognize that the big eye in the sky don't lie. The eye in the sky don't lie. See, that's a football term that, that the football players know, Wesley. You know about the eye, don't you? See, the eye is, is two cameras that they have watching during the game. And the point of the cameras are to see what we're doing, good, bad, or indifferent. And on Monday, it's time to break down what happened on the film, talking about the eye in the sky. See, what I learned is that the eye, the Almighty God, my eye, was watching over me. See, when, 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 when the coach would come in, he'd break the film down on Monday, and I'd be sitting in the back like, man, I don't really want to watch this film. We just got drugged. We just got beat by 35. I, don't, I dropped two passes and missed four blocks and missed an assignment. I don't want to watch this. See, that's how God does on our job. He'll put us in situations where we have to honor, honor, um, honor this eye in the sky. He'll send people in our presence to tell us, Another Christian comes and said, now you know that wasn't right. And then we get mad at the one that God just sent to tell us we was wrong. God's desire for our lives is to be better. I had another scripture. You got it? <laughs> Second Chronicles. For the eye of the Lord ranges throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed See, I told you, you might not get this if your heart ain't fully committed. But first of all, to excel in the workplace, I recognize who my boss was. Secondly, to excel in the workplace, the big eye in the sky don't lie. Thirdly, 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 when I think about how I excel in the workplace, I recognize that I'm going to get knocked down, but you got to find a way to get up. I'm going to get knocked down, but you got to find a way to get up. In my 14-year career, I got hit by a lot of linebackers, a lot of safety, a lot of big defensive end. I got knocked down. But in getting knocked down, it's not the getting knocked down. Somebody feeling me already. It ain't the getting knocked down. It's in your getting up. It's in your getting up. Same thing on our job. Sometimes you're going to have a boss that's just going to worry you like none other. You're going to have some co-workers at your job that are going to get on your nerves like no other. You're going to have some other folks standing around there pushing brooms that are going to get on your nerves like no other. Sometimes your job might lay you off. You might get fired. There may be cutbacks, but sometimes you're going to get knocked down on your job. But it ain't getting knocked down. It's the getting. It's the getting up. It's the getting up. I know you got me. I ain't even got to ask you. Proverbs. <laughs> Proverbs 24 and 16. For though the righteous man falls, he rises again. <laughs> See, I don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about when I know who my boss is. And when I, when I know the big eye in the sky don't lie, I don't have to worry about getting knocked down. I have to worry about falling because I know who my boss is. See, sometimes people, us as Christians, we get knocked down because somebody else said something. We got to know how to get back up. And the songwriter said, we fall down, but we get up. We get up and we keep going. And I thought, I thought, I thought, and I thought, what in my life have I felt like quitting? My wife was asked this before. Was there a time on the race she felt like giving up? And she said, no. I can't tell y'all that. <laughs> I can't tell y'all that. Uh, I felt like giving up. And, and the one thing that I really like about the race and being on the race is that everything that we did was documented. 
Like we talked about the big eye in the sky. Everything we did, we were being watched. And the one thing that I liked was the clip that, that they showed earlier about when we were in a cab ride. I might have said she didn't want to give up on that cab ride. That was, that was after God had spoke to me, what y'all saw. But what y'all didn't see was when we had a bad cab ride, we, the, the, the sheep didn't want to act right. We had to plant this rice in this muddy field, mud all the way up to my knees. I said, we done got a bad deal right here. We done got knocked down. Hey, where everybody at? So by the time we start I'm hurt back, planting grass, one shoot at a time, planting grass, we look up, and nobody else we racing with there. And everybody gone. So I'm like, God, what, what you done did? And in my mind, in my mind, I want to quit. I want to just shut it down at that point. But I can hear my God say, say, boy, you know you my son. And I would not have you quit on me now. I can hear my uncle tell me, say, son, say, you give out before you give And so I got inspired. I got inspired at that point. I said, I'm going to keep running this race until I can't race no more. See, that's what God wants us for us. He wants us to keep running no matter what the obstacles you have to hurdle look like. You just keep running. And he's going to do the planning for you. Amen. Now give God praise.